Hi everyone, so um, as I promised I'm going to uh, record the question of Abaye on Rabbah that we learned in class. I know it's a little bit difficult to understand. Um, some people had difficulty with it. It is deep, but I'm hoping that with this PowerPoint um, you can uh, figure it out uh, more easily. And of course, being that this is recorded, you can listen to this over and over and over again. Uh, until you get it. It will certainly help you for the test and the exam. So we're titling this PowerPoint a biased question on Rava and of course Rava's answer to a the question difficult the answer more difficult. So let's start. What do we know so far? So we've talked about a case that uh, a cow goes um, is being watched by a Shomer and the Shomer accidentally uh, leaves the uh, gate open. The cow wanders off and approaches a lake and then it's meta kedarka the cow then dies naturally so what would be the deen we have abaye who says chayav and rava says patur according to abaye in the case of the cow the shomer who uh, left the door open is chayav why is he chayav because it caused the cow to go to the lake and inhale the foul smell so his negligence is a um, is the cause of the cow dying. The cow dying is a direct result of the negligence that he had. Therefore, we look at the pshia as more uh, important in this case, and therefore he uh, is chayav. According to Rava, Rava says in the case of the cow, uh, the shomer who left the door open is patur. Why does he say patur? Because his logic is based on the whole concept of death and the malach hamavit. When the Malach HaMavid wants to kill, it kills regardless where you are. So therefore, it makes no difference if the cow was by the lake, even if the cow was not by the lake, even if the cow was uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, the ga- in the field, still surrounded by a locked gate, it still would have died. Therefore, the cow's death has nothing to do with the door being open. That's what we've learned. That's the, basic of the basis of the Gemara. So to understand Abayi's question, we need to look back at our Mishnah. Let's recap our Mishnah. We have an owner, and the owner rents it out to a renter, and then the renter uh, lends it out to a borrower. So we know that the borrower is Chayav. Who he pays is a Machlok in the Mishnah, Rabbi Yossi in Tanakama, but we're going to leave that for now. It has nothing to do with the question. But one thing we do know is that the renter is Patur. The renter doesn't pay anybody. So... Uh, uh, being that the renter is patur, if you remember, we asked uh, we asked a very big question. Uh, Rav Abar Mamal asked Rabbi Ami, how can the renter be patur if he gave the object to somebody else? We uh, we know that if you give the object to somebody else, according to Abaye, and I wrote here Abaye in big because that is going to uh, have to do with our answer. According to Abaye, the owner doesn't want his item in someone else's hands. So therefore, he should be chayav. So being that the renter gave the item to the borrower, he gave it to somebody else, he should be chayav. So the answer given by Rabbi Ami is that the owner gave him permission to lend it out. So therefore, being that our Mishnah is talking about where the owner gave him permission, that is why the renter is patur. And we learned that if he didn't give him permission, obviously he'd be chayav. But our Mishnah is talking about that the owner gave him permission to lend it out. So, Abai asks Rabbah, and here's the question. Why did the Gemara, Rabbi Ami, who gave the answer, decide to give the answer of that the owner gave him permission? Right? That's the answer that Rabbi Ami gave, that the owner gave him permission. Why couldn't he give another answer? What was the answer that he could have given? The same answer that Rabbah has been giving us the whole time, that the Malach HaMavit killed the animal, and it makes no difference where the animal was when it died. The renter would have been patur regardless. So if the owner comes and asks the renter, renter, where's my cow? And he said, well, it died naturally. The owner can't make him pay because the rent, the renter could have told him, listen, it would have died anyways. What's the difference if I gave it to the to the borrower? What's the difference if I lent it to him? It would have died. Malach HaMavit kills uh, where, no matter where the cow is. And that should be enough of a reason to make him patur. This is what would Rava would have said. So Abai is telling Rava, since the Gemara chose to ignore your reason, maybe your logic is incorrect. Maybe what you hold, your whole logic in our case, is wrong. So, 
there may, may, may be you're wrong and then that's what we uh, I'm right technically so be again being that the Gemara chose to give the answer of the permission that the that the owner gave him permission that should be and, and therefore that should be that's the correct logic and your logic Rabba is incorrect because if it was correct it would have brought that as the answer as the Malach Hamavit, but it did not so therefore it seems that you are wrong so let's look at Rabba's answer but in order to understand Rava's answer, we need to go back to the end of last sugya. We need to go to the last sugya at the end, end, end. We learned why a shomer is chayav if he gives it to somebody else. In the end of the day, we learned that shomer shemasar la shomer is chayav. That is the halacha lemaase. He is chayav. The question is why. So, as we've been learning most of the time, according to Abaye. The reason why he's chayab is because the owner doesn't want his object in someone else's hands. Therefore, the moment the first shomer gives it to the second shomer, he is chayab at that moment. Rabbah gives a different answer. This is what we learn at the end of the sugya. Rabbah says he's chayab because the owner does not trust the oath of the second shomer. Basically, he comes to the first Shomer, he says, where's my object? He says, it died naturally. He says, how do you know? The second Shomer went to court. And the owner basically tells him, I don't trust the other guy. I don't want him to swear. The only person who I trust and I'm going to believe is you. And therefore, since you, the first Shomer, did not swear, you are Chayab. Rava says, that's the reason why the first Shomer is Chayab in a case of Shomer Shem Masar La Shomer. So that, those were the two answers that we gave uh, as to why he is Chayab. Now that we know why Abaye says he's Chayab and why Rava says he's Chayab, now that we know that Abaye says the whole problem is giving it to someone else, and Rava says the whole problem is that the, the first guy didn't swear, now we can understand what Rava is going to respond to Abaye. Rava tells Abaye, Abaye, your question is a very good question, but it's only a question... It's only a good question based on the way you interpret why a Shomer is Chayab. S- being what? That the whole problem is that the first Shomer gave to somebody else. Let's look at it here. Since you, Abaye, say that the whole problem is that the owner doesn't want the item in someone else's hands, that's the whole issue, then now we have a question in our Mishnah why the renter is Patur. And therefore, the Gemara gave one answer, being the permission answer, and now you have a very good question as to why the Gemara didn't use my answer, the answer of the Malach HaMavit. So if you interpret the Gemara as the whole problem being that the owner doesn't want the item in someone else's hands, then your question is a good one. Why did the Gemara choose uh, uh, the, the answer of the permission and not choose my answer with the Malach HaMavit? However, Rava says, if you are to interpret the Gemara according to me, if you are going to interpret the whole issue uh, 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 as Shomer Shemasar La Shomer being uh, 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 an issue with the oath, then you don't have a question. So let's read it. According to me, Rava's telling Rava, uh, Rava's telling Abaye, I never had a problem with the Shomer giving it to somebody else. That was never my issue. That was not why I say the first Shomer is Chayav. My problem is that the owner doesn't trust the oath of the second Shomer. And the first Shomer never swore. But if you pay attention to the case in our Mishnah, if you go back and you read the Mishnah inside, the renter did swear. That's what the Mishnah says. Yishava Socher. The Socher, the Socher, pay, the Socher uh, 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 swears in court, and then the borrower has to pay. That's why he's patur. So according to Rava, he's patur regardless of what he did with the object. It made no difference if he gave it to the borrower or if he didn't give it to the, the borrower. The fact that he swore, he is patur. So Rava's telling Abai, Abai, your question isn't good based on the way I, I, uh, I, I explained the whole case. It's not even a question to begin with. It may be a question to, to the way you interpret the Gemara, but not the way I interpret the Gemara. And that's his answer. So let's see the text inside. We're looking over here on the right side over here. You can follow my little mouse. We look at the text inside. Amar le Abaye le Rava. Abaye tells Rava, this is his question, Le didcha, according to you, 
Rava, de amarta malacha mavet malihacha umalihatam, according to you who holds of the logic of the malacha mavet, that it makes no difference whether it's here or if it's over there, the malacha mavet's going to kill. Therefore, haide utvei Rav Abba bar Mamal Rav Ami, that question that Rabbi Abba, Rabbi Abba bar Mamal asked Rabbi Ami as to why the renter is patur if he gave it to somebody else, vishanile. And he answered him, Rabbi Ami answered him, the answer, that the owners gave him permission to lend it out. That was his answer. Here's my question, Abaya says. Lay Malay, why doesn't the why doesn't the renter tell him Malachamavit? Mali sorry, why doesn't Rabbi Ami answer Rav Abba Malachamavit? Maliha Maliatam. The Malachamav, it makes no difference where the cow is. If it was here or if it was over there. Malihacha, what's the difference here? Malihatam, what's the difference over there? That's what Rabbi Ami should have answered Rabbi Abba according to you, Rava. That would have been a better answer, being that that's the logic that you've been holding the whole time. Amarle, Rava answered him, whoa, whoa, wait a second. Le didhu, according to you, Abaye, de matnitu, that we learned in the Mishnah, that the whole problem, the whole problem in, in the case of Shomer, Shemasala Shomer is, en retzoni sheye piktoni biyad acher, that the whole problem is, I don't want my item, being the owner, doesn't want his item in someone else's hands. Ika leutva, ika lehahi. Therefore, you have a good question. Based on your logic of en based on your interpretation that that's the problem that the owner has, then your question is good. You have a good question. Why didn't the Gemara use my answer? Ledidi. However, according to me, the Amina who holds, Ant Mehemat Libi Shvua, who holds that, uh, that the owner says, I believe you. The first Shomer with the, with the uh, I believe, his oath, Veheach lo mehemon li bishvua, but the other guy, Shomer number two, I don't believe his oath. Lekalut klal. Therefore, you don't have a question. To me, the whole issue is talui. The whole issue is dependent on the first Shomer swearing or not. It being that he swore in our case, in the case of the Mishnah, he's patur regardless. It makes no difference where the cow was, whether it was in the Shoel's Rishut or it was not in the Shoel's Rishut. The whole issue is based on the oath. And that's how Rabbi answers Abaye. He tells Abaye, Abaye, your question isn't even a good question according to me. It makes no difference. It's all dependent on the Shvua. I don't care that he gave it to somebody else, that he gave it to somebody else's hands. That's your interpretation. And that's why, if you look back over here, based when we, uh, when we asked the question, let me just look over here, we asked this was the original question on the Mishnah. How can the renter be patur if he gave the object to somebody else? According to Abaye, and that's why I, I capitalize Abaye, according to Abaye, the owner doesn't want his item in someone else's hands. He should be chayab. According to Rava, that's not the problem. According to Rava, we don't care if he gave it in someone else's hands. Right? As long as he swears, he's patur. And that's why this whole question of Abaye is not really a question to begin with. So there's not, there, don't think of it, uh, don't think of Rava's answer as an as a answer to Abaye's question, but rather it's rebutting his question. It's a rebuttal. He's basically telling him, your question isn't a question. There's not even an answer to your question because it's not it's not a question to begin with. I really hope that helps. You can listen to this over and over and over again. Again, if you have any issues, you can approach me in person, but this should definitely help. Have a wonderful day.